You may not know it, but we're under attack. Everywhere you look, and in every habitat you'll find, something that doesn't belong here. Invasive species have found their way into the United States, and they're not good house guests. It is estimated that invasive species cost the United States up to $120 billion per year in damages and control costs. Many people are aware of the thousands of invasive plants and insect pests in the United States, but few may be mindful of the more than 1,000 invasive wildlife species who also call the U.S. home. Wildlife Services, a program in the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, is one group working to prevent, control, and eradicate these unwanted animal invaders. The National Wildlife Research Center, or NWRC, is the research arm of the Wildlife Services Program. Together with Wildlife Services field specialists, NWRC researchers are protecting America's agriculture and native ecosystems from invasive species. Let's take a closer look at five of the worst animal invaders in the United States, what's being done to curb their impacts, and the research behind new invasive species management tools and techniques. The first animal in our top five countdown probably won't surprise you. Many of the rats you see are invasive species. The roof rat and others such as the Polynesian rat and Norway rat can have a big impact when they invade ecosystems. This is especially true for island ecosystems where native plants and animals have evolved in relative isolation from competitors and predators. In addition to ecological damage, Invasive rats can also damage agricultural crops, contaminate stored foods, damage structures and property, and transmit disease. Wildlife services experts in Hawaii and other locations help reduce problems caused by invasive rats through the development and use of repellents, rodenticides, barriers, and detection and monitoring devices. They also assist state and non-governmental organizations with rodent eradication efforts on the Aleutian, Hawaiian, Caribbean, and other islands. These efforts have greatly improved the abundance and diversity of native plants and animals on the treated islands. A recent study conducted by Wildlife Services scientists at the National Wildlife Research Center's Hawaii Field Station led to the development of a new rodent-proof nest box. Researchers are hopeful the new nest box will help in the recovery of some of Hawaii's endangered birds, including the kawaii thrush. Number four on our top five animal invaders countdown is another rodent, but this one is much larger than your average rat. The nutria is a semi-aquatic rodent native to South America. It can grow up to two feet in length and weigh close to 30 pounds. The nutria was originally brought to the United States in 1889 for the fur industry. When consumer demands for fur dropped in the 1940s, Many of the animals were released either intentionally or accidentally into wetlands across the southern United States. Today, this invasive species is found in approximately 30 states. Their burrowing damages wetlands, levees, and other structures, and they can overgraze native wetland plants, eat agricultural crops, and girdle trees. Wildlife services experts are actively involved in nutrient management and removal. Field specialists work with local, state, and federal partners to conduct assessments and develop management plans that include protecting native vegetation, soil, and other natural resources from nutria damage. For example, Wildlife Services is leading the first large-scale North American effort to eradicate nutria in Maryland, where the rodents have devastated coastal Chesapeake Bay marshes. To aid in removal efforts, NWRC researchers have designed and tested new nutria lures and traps including a new multiple capture trap. Compared to traditional traps, this live trap reduces the amount of effort required to capture multiple animals and prevents the accidental loss of non-target animals. We can blame the presence of our next invader in our top five countdown on poet and playwright William Shakespeare. The European starling was brought and released into the United States in 1890 by Shakespeare aficionados. They wanted to establish populations of all the different bird species ever mentioned in Shakespeare's works. It turns out, starlings were noted for their mimicking abilities in Shakespeare's Henry IV. Starlings easily adapted to a variety of habitats, nest sites, and food sources, 
and thus spread quickly across the country. Today there are more than 200 million starlings in North America. The birds often gather in large flocks and roosts. They can damage agricultural crops, cause sanitation and disease problems, compete with native birds, and consume and contaminate livestock feed. Techniques for dispersing and removing starlings vary from hazing devices such as propane cannons and other noisemakers to repellents and toxicants. At the NWRC, researchers are not only developing and registering new management tools, but are also investigating the role starlings play in disease transmission, particularly at feedlots and dairies. Studies have shown that salmonella contamination of feed and water at feedlots is strongly related to the number of starlings present at the facilities. Researchers believe that starlings may be moving contaminated cattle feces on their feet, legs, and feathers from one location to another. Slithering into number two on our countdown is one of the most notable invasive species ever to find its way onto American soil, the brown tree snake. The snake is native to Australia, the Solomon Islands, New Guinea, and Indonesia, and was accidentally introduced to the island of Guam soon after World War II, probably as a stowaway in ship cargo. With the absence of natural predators and other population controls, the brown tree snake population on Guam quickly reached unprecedented numbers, with approximately 13,000 snakes per square mile. The snakes have caused the extinction of many of the island's native birds and bat species. It's also caused thousands of power outages, widespread loss of domestic birds and pets, and considerable emotional trauma to residents and visitors. Since 1995, Wildlife Services has worked with numerous groups, including the U.S. Department of Defense, to research methods to manage brown tree snakes and prevent their spread to other areas, such as the Hawaiian Islands. A recent assessment by NWRC economists showed that if the brown tree snake were to become established on Hawaii, at similar levels to those on Guam, the total estimated damage from medical incidents, power outages, and decreases in tourism would range from $590 million to $2 billion annually. To prevent this from happening and reduce damages on Guam, Wildlife Services field specialists trap snakes, use trained snake detector dogs to find snakes in cargo, conduct nighttime spotlight searches, and promote public education. To date, Wildlife Services has removed more than 150,000 snakes from Guam's ports and airports. This is in addition to the thousands of snakes removed every year through Wildlife Service's baiting efforts across the island. NWRC researchers have aided in these efforts through the development and registration of the first snake toxicant and fumigants, as well as snake traps, lures, attractants, and reproductive inhibitors. Number one on our countdown of the five worst animal invaders in the United States is ripping and rooting its way across America. Found in at least 35 states with a population of more than 5 million, feral swine cause approximately 1 billion in damages and control costs each year. The damage caused by feral swine seems endless and ranges from destroying native habitats, agricultural crops and property, to spreading disease. Wildlife Services provides technical advice and recommendations to landowners, state agencies, and others, as well as direct management assistance for feral swine problems in more than 30 states. Experts provide a three-prong approach that involves operational activities, disease surveillance, and research. Operational activities include trapping, shooting, fencing, and habitat modification. Wildlife Services, wildlife disease biologists, monitor feral swine for diseases that can affect livestock, people, and pets. If a foreign animal disease such as foot and mouth disease were to enter the United States, feral swine could potentially spread the disease to domestic swine or other susceptible animals. Thus, one area of NWRC research focuses on methods to curb an emergency disease epidemic in feral swine. Other research includes the development of oral toxicants and vaccines. However, before any of these new technologies can be used, a swine-specific delivery system must be developed that prevents native species from accessing baits. Results from field tests of new delivery systems are promising, and researchers are hopeful they'll soon have new options for controlling feral swine. 
As worldwide trade and travel continues to grow, so too will the challenges for land managers, ecologists, and biologists dealing with invasive species. Public involvement and commitment to preventing the spread of unwanted animal invaders is key to the future health and sustainability of our native wildlife and ecosystems. To learn more, please visit our website at www.aphis.usda.gov slash wildlife underscore damage slash NWRC.